Hello everyone, my name is Abdurrahman Nana. I'm a Jordanian medical student studying in Basha Shahir University School of Medicine. Now I just finished my fourth year, which means I'm one step closer towards graduation. My goals after graduation is to apply and get matched in a US residency program. In pursuit of that goal, I decided to take the step one examination halfway through my fourth year. I wanted to share my experiences for those interested in taking the step one exam in the future. So let's start off by talking about what exactly is the US Emily. The United States Medical Licensing Examinations, or the US Emily, are a series of tests, the step one, the step two, and the step three, all of which collectively help assess whether a student is ready or not to continue their education in the United States. A lot of people consider the step one to be the most important of these exams. The step one is roughly an eight hour long examination based on MCQ questions, multiple choice questions, that assess a student's knowledge in basic sciences. The basic sciences are the things you learn in first year, second year, and third year in Basha Shahir University. So these things include physiology, pathology, pharmacology, genetics, biochemistry, and the various other disciplines that you're taught in the first three years of medicine. Now, since the first three years of medical school educate us in basic sciences, and the fourth to sixth year educate us in clinical sciences, one should start considering the step one exam and when to take it after they finish third year. For me personally, I found that it was most suitable for me to take the exam halfway through my fourth year. That's when I felt most prepared. Now, what gets a lot of people concerned is how to exactly prepare for the USMLE step one exam. Now, personally for me, um, and for a lot of people in fact, what we did was divide our time between an integrative phase and a dedicated phase. So everyone knows that medical school is really hard. You have Monday to Friday, eight to five. It's a long and it's a hard process and one barely has time to study for their own curriculum, let alone for a board exam. So what I found most suitable was integrating what I study in my medical school into what the US Emily wants me to know. So for example, if I've learned a new topic in school, what I would do when I go back home is to read that exact same topic from US Emily based resources. And I would annotate my US Emily notes with the lecture notes that the teacher has taught me. Now that sounds like a really hard process, but you'd be surprised at how many things that the professors in Basha Shahir teach us end up overlapping with the things that the US Emily or the step one exam wants you to know. Now, after a successful integrative phase, um, one should start thinking about their dedicated phase. Now the dedicated phase is different. The dedicated phase is what you want to do when you're free from school. For example, during a semester break or ideally during a summer vacation. That's the time where you should throw everything on the side and focus on one thing and one thing only, which is your step one exam. What you're going to be doing is studying and dedicating, dedicating all of your time for this step one exam so you can orient yourself for what you should know and how exactly they're going to ask it to you. So now that we've talked about preparation, the integrated phase and the dedicated phase, let's move on and talk about resources. Resources can be a tricky subject just because there are so many of them and often it gets students confused. So what I'm going to be doing is telling you the resources that worked for me. I think that the single most important resource should be a question bank. There are many question banks out there. The typical favorite is your world. Um, I just want to say one thing when it comes to question banks, your goal should not be always to get the question right. Your goal should be to retain the information that the question asks you. A lot of the times you will not be able to get the question right and it can get frustrating, naturally so. However, as long as you take in the information, as long as you retain it and you remember it later on, then you just did the right thing. It's not always about getting the question right. Sometimes it's just about learning and preparing for the time when you should get the question right, which is the exam time. Other resources, as, you, as for other resources, as you all know, the first aid book, the first aid step one book is very helpful for, um, for brief notes about the exam. Um, it summarizes all of the topics, so you should be aware that it will not always include full-on necessary information. It's a summary book. 
Um, otherwise, you will find some subject-specific resources. For example, for pathology, I found pathoma to be immensely helpful. And for physiology, I found BRS to also be helpful. So these are some resources, but as long as you integrate your studies properly with what you learn with your professors in Basisha here, then hopefully you'll be good to go. So in summary, we've talked about what exactly is the step one exam, how to prepare and allocate your time properly, and what are some good resources in preparation. So let's just wrap up with some quick advice. My first advice um, for the students that are considering taking the exam is take your time. A lot of the times people think that they're late just because they finished the se their second year or their third year and they still did not take the step one exam. The truth is you can take this exam after third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, or even after graduation. A lot of people take it after graduation, as a matter of fact. Uh, my second piece of advice is for the students that took the exam but did not end up getting the mark they dreamed of. Now, I'm one of these students. I was dreaming of a 250, but I fell short of that. I was not able to get my 250. For these students, I want to remind them that th it's a long process. Applying for a match in the United States is a long process. Even if you don't get the mark that you dream of in the step one, it does not mean that that process is ruined. You can just keep your head up, you can keep moving on to the next process and hopefully compensate for what you see as a deficit in your step one exam. Stay positive everyone. I wish you the best. Thank you very much.